Hey everybody, it's Vince from Spradley Kia here in Pueblo, Colorado, and today I have uh, our 2023 plug-in hybrid X-Line Prestige vehicle uh, for the Sportage. It is in jungle green with the sage green interior. I like this trim level so much, my wife has this exact same car and I am a big fan of it. It gets tremendous gas mileage uh, depending upon how you use it. Um, it's great as an all-around everyday EV vehicle if you're going under 35 miles an hour. Um, honestly, we've averaged 150 miles uh, per gallon uh, just by going to the store and taking the kids to school, that kind of thing. Typically, my wife averages between 60 and 70 miles per gallon, and then we uh, travel a lot for sports, and there, when she does that, she averages about 50 to 70 miles per gallon, depending upon the terrain here in Colorado. But like I said, this is one of my favorite vehicles. I like it so much, I bought one. Uh, I love the sage green interior seats because at night they look dark gray and you don't really find a lot of, uh, a lot of vehicles that have a dark gray interior. Uh, so let's just kind of start off from the front. You have these really gorgeous, beautiful redesigned boomerang daytime running light. Uh, you have your LED front headlights, your tiger nose grill, you have your front sensors right there. You have your Kia Script badging right there, big and bold on the front. I love the way this hood looks. So with the lines, you can see really how how that's, that, those body lines are defined all the way down the side and they come up right through the front and the front fascia. Uh, big, big fan of how this thing looks. The, when they announced the redesign and what they were looking at for the Sportages, I knew we were gonna sell a lot of them uh, just because, I mean, the gas models and the regular old hybrid models have the same design practically, but uh, I knew that all my lease customers were gonna be trying to trade up you have your fog lamps down there. I don't know if you can see it here in the sunset. Super, super cool. Uh, this car is, like I said, it's definitely an amazing vehicle. And I will show you one feature that is in the 23 model that is confirmed to not be in the 24 model. So I'll, uh, I'll show you that feature when we get into the interior cabin of the car. Kind of a big feature. I'm surprised they're getting rid of it. And if there's any way that I can help you find a vehicle, uh, let me know. I do sell at MSRP. Uh, I've been shipping vehicles all around the country lately just because apparently there's a lot of uh, places out there not selling at MSRP. I really do enjoy these 19 inch wheels. Take a look at that. Super cool. Push and pop gas cap. Actually, it's not push and pop. Sorry, like I said, this is my wife's car, not mine. But when you come inside, you have right there, the little gas button. Press that guy and then it'll unlock. Not too shabby. Coming along here to the back, you have these really good, uh, super uh, LED, super awesome LED lamps back here uh, for your tail lights. Kia big and bold there on the back. Sportage, you can tell this is an X-Line because it is badged X-Line here on the right hand side. You can set the tailgate to automatically raise uh, or you can kind of do it standard. And kind of what sets this apart from our gas models, again, this is a plug-in, you have your electricity right here on the side, which is push and pop. So this is a level two charger uh, or a level one. So you have your little removable hook there and you can see there that you have your um, plug there for level one or level two charging. Um, super cool. My wife charges it overnight on a level two. It takes uh, less than eight hours. I think it takes about six hours for her. If she does a level one, it takes about 10 hours on our level one. But not all chargers are created equally. Um, I do have a link that I'll put in the description below for my personal favorite level one charger. Uh, it's a level one, level two hybrid that I got off of uh, Amazon, which works for my family very, very well. And it is faster than the charger that comes with the car. So it's one of those things where, like I was saying, not all chargers are created equally. Uh, so charging times may vary. I really always love this kind of like diamond design right there, uh, kind of on your on your back then you have your 
your rear fin there where it has the uh, the uh, windshield wiper underneath that's kind of hidden and then you have your black shark fin and then your you know it's an x-line because of those aggressive roof rack rails which uh, that's something that key has done on their x-line trim levels you're gonna see that carry over into the new EV9 x-line trim levels are gonna have those roof rails before I open up the back let me show you the side here because I get a lot of customers that say Vince how come you don't show the passenger seat in the vehicle this passenger seat does have automatic controls which are a big uh, request and then you have your Harman card and audio badging there for your upgraded audio lock and unlock controls and then you have this really cool like kind of faux wood design that carries over from the interior of the car all the way into the door which I've always been a fan of I kind of got a look of that sage green interior uh, material like I was saying, I like it because it looks dark gray. Um, it's not too green. It really isn't. A lot of people think, whoa, green interior, it's going to look way too leprechaun-y, but it really doesn't. It's like a really deep green, which almost looks gray, which I'm a big fan of. Okay, so let's go around here. Let's take a look at the back. You have your automatic lift gate, but you can also have a little button right there. You can also lift the gate uh, from the inside and you can also lift the gate from the key fob. So this guy does have our rear sunscreen, oh not sunscreen, cargo cover, it's cargo cover. I always mix my words up. You have your rear cargo cover which is very easily detractable. One thing that people may not realize is that cargo cover can be stowed underneath here if you have this little um, foam insert taken out. So if you take out the little foam insert, uh, you have little hooks down there. I'm not gonna really do it because it's kind of getting this foam insert one-handedly is kind of hard. But down here, you have little grooves on that side and on that side, and you can use the tension bar right there, pull that tension bar off, and then place it underneath down there. So. A lot of people don't realize you could do that, but you can do that on the Sportages and on the Sorentos and on Telluride, you can do that in the Kia vehicles. This guy does come with a level one charger right here uh, from the manufacturer. Um, you don't gotta go out and buy one, but like I said, uh, not all level one chargers are created equal. And I found that there's other ones on Amazon that do charge your vehicle faster. It's all about ampage and electricity and all that stuff. Taking a look here, you do have your rear lamps back here for your cargo area at night. You do have your uh, 12 volt right there. You have your physical paddles that will drop those seats. So if I pull that paddle, that seat's gonna fall. I call it near flat, depending upon how that seat belt's positioned, it's gonna either go flat straight down or it's gonna need a little oomph. Uh, you can hook that seat belt into that little seat belt clip right there to, uh, to help that. So not too shabby, a lot of cargo space back here. So um, my daughter plays softball. I usually mention that in a lot of my videos, but our 10 by 10 tent can fit the width from there to there. Um, you have to put it in a little diagonal, but then it'll fall straight down and you have room for a 10 by 10 tent, which is really cool. Uh, coolers, bags, our overnight stuff, I mean, that's the whole reason we upgraded from a Seltos to a Sportage is because of uh, basically my daughter and all this stuff that we have to lug around for her. Um, and this vehicle has excellent cargo space. If you have little ones, you have child anchor locks all along the back seat as well. So you got one there, one in the middle, and then you have the little tether right there on that one. So you do have child anchor locks in all the back seats and then plenty of room for all your accessories you can purchase, like that little clip there. You can get the, uh, the little net, which is pretty cool. I actually use the net in my Kia Stinger, but uh, yeah, a lot of room in that back cargo area. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this button right here and it's gonna fall flat. Perfect. Okay, let's go to the back area. So, rear seats. Again, take a look at how that interior is laid out. Those seats are super nice. You have this really comfortable stitching right here. This is some really cool soft leather. I'm gonna go ahead and put this seat belt in the little clip here so it doesn't rattle when you drive. And actually, I think it goes up like that. 
There we go. Speaking of seatbelts, you do have fully adjustable seatbelts on the A pillar here for your front passengers. Right there. And then hopping in, you have your phone charger plugs right there and right there for your rear passenger seats. You have your little clippies here for bags and purses, which are kind of cool. Again, this uh, seat folds down what I like to call near flat, because you can see there's a little bit of a lip right there, but we do I do like to call it near flat. And then you have the big, beautiful panoramic sunroof, which I'll open up here when I get to the front, but I'm a big fan of that sunroof. You have your little lights right there your little garment hook, your little oh crap handle here so you help you uh, if they're driving aggressively, uh, which this car definitely has get up and go. Um, the hybrid models are the Sportages with the turbos. So if you don't already know that, gas models no longer have turbos in them. You need a hybrid for turbos. Um, I don't really speak a lot about, you know, kind of like the engine in these vehicles just because I like to do the everyday features that the everyday driver would want to see. But uh, these guys do have the 1.6 turbos in them. Uh, super super neat there's kind of a shot of the uh, interior cabin there and the alloy sport pedals right there which are kind of cool definitely uh, i drive barefoot every now and then if i'm just going around the corner um and that uh those pedals they don't feel bad on your feet let me tell you that you have air for your rear vents and then you have a little cubby hole right there my daughter just puts trash there basically but you can use it i'm sure for multiple things Taking a look at the back seat here, uh, of the the back of the seat, I should say, you have this cool little uh, coat rack kind of hook uh, design there to hang your garments, uh, that kind of thing. And then you have your adjustable button right there because it can go up and down um, right there. Cool. All right, let's hop into the front driver's seat because that's where a lot of uh, you're gonna spend your time if you're gonna be driving this vehicle. And there's a lot of features to go over in that front driver's seat. These vehicles can get, these, uh, I'm sorry, these videos can get kind of long, so I'm not gonna probably hit everything, but I will hit most things. And like I said, if I can help you um, with any kind of vehicle purchase that you may want to do, uh, if you can't find anything in your area, uh, customers are always responsible for their own shipping if I have to deliver it to you, but I have an excellent uh, shipping company that I can recommend, which basically shipped a vehicle from Colorado to New Jersey for under $1,100. Um, it's not as expensive as you probably think. All right, so let's close this door here. And right away, I want to point out memory seating in this vehicle. You have your one-touch uh, roll-up and down windows. You have your locks you have your mirror controls you have your child locks right there uh the, i've never actually really accidentally have hit that i've only done it once but uh, in my whole year and a half of kind of having that design where that is there never actually mistakenly hit that you do have blind spot detectors in this vehicle so i don't know if you can see that triangle right there but that is the uh, blind spot detector if someone's in your blind spot it'll highlight uh I believe it's orange but if you are uh, also using your turn signal it will not only highlight orange but it will also um, beep at you one thing I want to point out is the mirror control so this one I believe if I put it in reverse maybe not never mind I was gonna show you a feature that other Kias have this one does not have the curb mirrors I uh, could have sworn it did, but we'll scratch that. Coming over here left to right, I do love these air vent designs right here. I'm actually gonna turn it on because the air is not flowing in this thing and it's because these vents are not on. Don't know why they come off, but Jesus, there we go. Now we got some air moving through here. So I really love that design of that vent. It's super um, convenient. It really puts the air right on you. A uh, big fan of that. You have your illumination controls. Those buttons right there will illuminate that center screen, as you can see. Go up and down. You have your traction control, which you can turn off. You can raise the tailgate. Again, you can pop the gas cap right there. You have your electronic parking brake right there. 
coming up to the stick here, the stock on the left hand side, you have your lights you can set to auto. So as the sun goes up and down, your lights will turn uh, automatically on or off. And then you have your uh, bright controls right there. Um, pretty nifty. You have paddle shifters on this vehicle. So right there and right there, which are uh, pretty nifty if you are in sport mode. You have your voice control. If you press it once, it's gonna activate the voice control in the car. Not gonna lie, it's a little cumbersome at first, but it will learn how you speak and it does get better over time. Um, if you press it twice, it'll activate the Android Auto or the Apple CarPlay system. Uh, so Siri or the other, the other one, which I think is what, Bixby? I'm an Apple guy, so I'm not quite sure what the Android Auto voice assistant's called, but it uh, pressing that twice or pressing and holding will, uh, that that's what's gonna activate that. Mode is gonna change your audio mode, so if you press that, you can see, you can cycle through here and activate which modes you're gonna use the most. So if you do Bluetooth audio um, and FM and Sirius radio, you can check those three things. And then uh, when you cycle through your music, it's going to go through those three items for your mode. Volume control, tuner control right there. You have answer a call and then you have the star button. The star button is going to give you another little menu here that'll pop up, but that is going to give you options to make with that star button different things. Personally, I like reject a call, end a call. It seems like it's muscle memory. So it seems like that is something that would be the most useful, uh, but you can do things here like privacy mode, voice memos. You can um, put some map features on there like to change your route or cancel your route or reroute. Uh, you have your hybrid screen that you can go to, but honestly, I like my hybrid screen on this star button down there, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, personally, I just like it there because it's a better fit, but I do think reject a call, end a call is probably going to be what you would um, want it to do. This car is actually sold and going to a customer that ordered from me uh, in New Mexico. So I'm not going to set any settings up, but... Um, if my customer is watching, which I'm sure you are, because I'm going to send you this link as your as your delivery video, um, that is how you adjust those there on the steering wheel. This button here, the two pages button, I think is a very important button. It does the cycling through of the system in front of you. So right there, we have 30 miles of full electric range, 107 miles of gasoline. Um, no one's really driven this car at all, but uh, you do get a full tank of gas uh, from me. Uh, with any purchase of a new vehicle, but doing that two pages button, it'll cycle you through that left to right. So you have your um, lane keep assist settings, but then you have that toggle switch right there. This toggle switch will move you up and down so you can go through like your attention levels. And then if you go through here, you can cycle through and do your trip info. Uh, that is kind of an easy screen to see how your power is going is being um, adjusted. So if you can see if the hybrid battery is using energy, if the gas engine is using energy, and vice versa, you know, especially with regenerative braking. So in this vehicle, you can charge it, which I strongly recommend. It basically becomes an EV, especially if you're doing short distance driving. Um, charge it every night, and then you'll never really buy gas. Um, you can do hybrid, which is obviously a combination of the two, but you don't really have to plug it in, um, but you are gonna get great hy hybrid miles. Um, but it does have regenerative braking. So that is using the energy from when you're coasting, going downhill, braking, being expelled from the wheels, being put back into the battery. So you can go through that motion. One other thing here is let's just jump to this button right here, this EV, HEV button that's the button that's gonna switch you through the mode. So right now I'm on EV. If I press it, I can switch to hybrid mode. You can see right there, it's gonna tell you what mode we're in. Press it again, we're in electric mode, and then press it one more time, we're in automatic mode. Automatic mode is going to essentially try and give you the best of both worlds. It's gonna you know, try and use if it's gonna put you in EV or not, if it's gonna put you in hybrid or not. What I really like about this car is that it is smart. You really don't have to do much to it. I strongly recommend just leaving it in electric mode, but what you'll notice, and I didn't know this until I owned one, is that the gas engine will trickle charge the EV battery. So 
You may be using the gas engine, but it may be trickle charging the EV battery, so you're using less gas because it's powering the electric motor. I don't know how, I don't know why, but it makes sense. I mean, it really does, but you'll notice that. So right now you can see the engine is powering the battery. So, well, let's double, let's test that. So I'm gonna click, oops, see, muscle memory. I went to go hit this star button. I'm gonna hit uh, house, PHEV. So right now we have the engine powering the electric battery which is going into the into the battery there so your it, it does that when you're driving it's easier to to see when you're driving because you're going to see the little blue lines going in there so right now you're seeing orange lines showing that it's gas but you'll also see it turn to blue which to me means that it's the it's the it's powering the the electric battery through the motor so definitely something i didn't recognize i drive an ev myself but Obviously that's a different animal, but it's something that's super easy to use because you just drive this car and then um, it's not that hard. You have your compass when you're using your navigation, uh, you, you'll have your turn by turn navigation in this screen as well. And then you have your tire distribution for power. I actually like this screen a lot. I leave it on this screen personally myself uh, to see what, uh, what traction my wheels are getting. Um, questions on here so right here you do have your speed limit indicator which is really cool it'll read the signs uh, for the speed limit and if you're going over the speed limit that black will turn red you have your gas uh, miles till empty right there you have your miles per gallon right there and then you have your miles driven right there um, this button here is your lane forward assist so you'll notice that icon appear right there when I press that button what that's doing is it's using the information from this box up here in order to give you um, information regarding keeping you in the road by using information for the car in front of you. Let me say that a little bit more, co more coherently. So let's say you're on a two lane road or you're on a road where the lanes aren't really defined as well. The information from that box is gonna keep you centered to either the car in front of you or if it's reading just one line, it'll keep you with that one line um, it'll also gently move you to the center of the lanes as well especially when you can read both lines but it's it's called lane follow assist and that's one of our ADOS systems which is really cool they do give you the option to turn it on and off every time you get into the car uh, which I do recommend you have your adaptive cruise control right there which is neat uh, that's where you can set your cruising control limit to let's say 75 so you're going 75, if someone cuts in front of you, you'll go back the car lengths that you have it set to, and you can set it up to four car lengths. So if someone jumps in front of you, and then you will then go back four car lengths behind them. If they do 60, you will stay four car lengths behind them doing 60 as well. If they go way past 75, you'll increase back up to whatever your, well, 75, whatever your pre-limit is. Pretty cool. Your um, cruise control options is right here, and then you can set it with this toggle switch here, which is something I cannot demonstrate while I uh, have the uh, have it parked or while I'm not moving. Okay, questions on the steering wheel. A lot of information there, especially with that two pages button. But let's move over here into the touchscreen. So again, this is a touchscreen. Um, super easy to use you just swipe it towards the driver but you do have a lot of information right here you have your radio you have your time you have your date then you have a little inlay of the map right there you can just touch that map oh how if i actually touch it you can touch that map and then it'll just appear so complete touch screen and if you see this little white arrow here that means you have a try screen so you can move this up and down and then you can set um whatever the you know content right there it's in the settings you can add or delete those screens like personally i remove the compass i don't really need the compass um so who does now you can also collapse this guy and then you have the big screen so it uses all three um, boxes instead of just two out of three little house takes you home so if you see the little house there it'll take you back to your main menu uh but super easy to use let's go right there see how easy that is 
PHEV screen. Okay, let's talk about this screen. So this screen gives you EV range, energy information, charge management, eco driving, and then you have your energy flow right there. So let's go to EV range. So EV range, you can go anywhere in this circle right here. That is your range. If you have charging stations, it's gonna show you green is available, orange is in use, red's out of order, gray is unknown. You can zoom in. Nope, let's zoom out one. And then you can see how those charging stations appear. And those are the stations that you, this car can use. So it's not gonna show you DC fast charger level threes. It's gonna show you the max that this car can use, which is really cool. Nothing sucks more than going to a charging station and then figuring out you cannot use it. Uh, but you can zoom in, you can zoom out. It's super easy to find stations in this car. And I'm gonna show you another way to do it too. You can click the list button right up there and it's gonna show you list here. So it'll show you, as you can see, AC, AC, AC right there. It'll tell you the kind of current that, uh, that it's using. This Nissan one is an AC-DC, also it's combo, so there's one of each one there, so it's going to give you that option. It'll give you miles away, um, and then you can go to, that's my nearest, uh, my nearest position. Obviously this uh, scrolls up and down. You can see how many of them are just in my town that are around here, and honestly, I bet you 60% of them are free, uh, which is really cool. Distance, you can, oops. So let me set that. So I clicked this, this C dot one right there. So I can easily set it as a destination and then it'll go into the, uh, the maps there and set it as your destination. Super easy. If you click this little white eye right there, it's gonna give you information about that charging station. So it's a level two charger. There's the phone number to contact for the customer service. There's the address. If you scroll, sometimes if you scroll up, it'll have more information, but it'll tell you what, what's there. And then you can set it as a destination, add it as a waypoint if you already have a destination already loaded, or you can click save or mark it as a favorite with that little star right there. So a lot of information right here. If you have a destination in your map already set, then these little gray items here will pop up. So you can do a charging station along your route, near your destination or near center of map, which is essentially gonna be nearest you. Uh, so a lot of cool things right there. Everything's a touchscreen. So see how it says 603 up there? If I touch 603, it's gonna take me to the date and time screen, which you can manipulate. So just wanted to point that out. Little back arrow takes you back a step. So that will take us, oops, again, if I hit it correctly, little back, uh, little, arrow, little arrow will take you back a step. Little house will take you home. So little house will take you to the main screen. Let's talk energy information. So energy information, this is kind of cool because it's gonna tell you what you have. Right now there's 135 miles. Of that you have 29 of full electric battery, 106 of gas, batteries at 93% state of charge. If you were to put this on a 240, so a level two charger, it's gonna take you nine minutes to charge. If you're gonna put this on a 120, which is a level 10, which is the cord in the back that it comes with, it's gonna take you 55 minutes to charge. Again, charging time may vary depending upon charging conditions. That could be weather, that could be your equipment, um, but that is a nice little estimate of what this car should be doing for you. Charge management, not something that I use a lot of, but you can set you know, charging schedules if you have this thing plugged in at home on a home charger. Um, that's kind of helpful, I've heard, but I personally have never used it. Eco driving, so this kind of shows you your fuel economy. Uh, it shows you your electric motor use. It'll show you your hybrid fuel economy right there. But I like this fuel history economy. So no one's really driven this car. Um, you can see, I guess, when it was at port or when it was being manufactured, that one mile was probably from the factory to the trailer kind of thing. Um, and then right here during shipping. And then this was me uh, when we got it, uh, when we did our safety inspection. So there is... Um, that that's really useful my wife does this and keeps track of it and you'll notice if you're like on full ev it'll say 700 miles right there like 700 miles per gallon it maxes out at 99.9 .9. so i mean that's just being full ev so like i said this is a great around town kind of car short distance driving kind of car i mean you technically wouldn't have to put a lot of gas in it if that's what you are doing 
Um, map. So we kind of already talked about map and did a lot of those features. You just click the little um, the little magnifying glass there and you can type in where you want to go. When you're driving, you want to use your voice assistant right there to kind of t tell you uh, to enter in destinations because it will not let you type in destinations while you're driving. Navigation menu is super useful if you travel a lot. Um, that's going to be like nearest point of entries. I like previous destinations. Um, that's just something that I find a little bit useful. But nearby points of interest will tell you gas stations, restaurants, sit down restaurants, convenience stores, all that kind of stuff. And it'll tell you what's near you. So if I want fast food near me, boom, it, it's a very similar screen to the uh, EV screen I showed you recently. You just pick where you want to go, set as a destination. Super easy, super user friendly, uh, big fan. Um, it's, it's a very easy system to use phone you have bluetooth apple carplay android auto um, apple carplay and android auto are under phone uh, projection but you do need um, apple carplay or android auto to be wired on this car um, i do have a little device a little box that i use every day that gives you wireless apple carplay and wireless android auto and you can even watch netflix on this screen right here um, there's a link in my channel for that i like it i use it every day it's super useful for me uh, but um, they did give me a free one just to promote that, so pretty cool. Voice memos, climate, valet mode. Quiet mode is really interesting in this car, so provides sound only to the front speakers. If volume exceeds a certain factory set quiet level, uh, it will be lowered to that sound. You just press that button there, quiet mode, and then it disconnects the sound from the back. Cannot demonstrate it there or else YouTube will uh, censor me. HD radio, that is a company, not exactly quality, but so you have traffic, Doppler, and fuel prices. I live in a kind of a small town, so we don't have that here. But if you live in a bigger city or if you're commuting and you pass through bigger cities, you can press that and you'll give you more detailed information. Radio, super easy to use. You have your list up here, AM, FM, Sirius Radio. Um, so you have your channel list right there that you can press. It'll take you through your channels. And then anything you want to favorite, you just press the star. So super, super easy to use. Um, where are we at? Set up media Kia Connect. I already set my customer's Kia Connect up. Uh, your salesperson should be doing that for you every time you buy a car because um, it's super important because you do have one year free of Kia Connect and that's like remote start, remote climate, all that kind of good stuff. And um, after that, it becomes subscription based. Um, you can also do vehicle locate, which is really cool. Uh, all free for the first year. One thing I want to point out under setup, I got to press that screen. Under setup, I would start when you get this vehicle or any, any key of vehicle, go to user profile, click on user profile. Oops. Click like your person and then you can set up that profile and you can set up pictures, um, how you like your settings, things like that. That way, when you go over here to vehicle, vehicle is going to allow you to change everything but if you don't set your profile first you could probably go through vehicle not probably i've done it you go through vehicle and then a bunch of stuff you'd have to duplicate when you actually set your profile so let's say convenience can under convenience you can set all of this stuff to how you like it especially like your like if you want the rear occupancy alert all of that information will carry over into your profile well, most of it will carry over to your profile. But you can turn off and on the occupancy alert here. Uh, you can wanna make sure your wireless phone charging system is turned on, your auto rear wiper is turned on. This is where you can set your service intervals also. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and see if this will let me do that. Yep, we're gonna enable service interval. We're gonna do distance. We wanna do 5,000 miles. And then my service department will probably set it to 8,000 miles after that. In these vehicles, full synthetic oil, uh, they do like you have your first service at 5,000 miles and then set it differently after that. Um, door, two press unlock, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna enable that. When you, there's a little button on the side of the door, you press it once, it'll unlock your door. You press it twice, it'll unlock all four doors and then vice versa. So you should never have to take your key out of your pocket um, or purse or bag power lift gate like i was saying so you do have a power lift gate and then you do have a smart lift gate here as well i'm gonna leave that turned off because a lot of people don't like it a lot of people do like it but it's one of those things that's pretty polarizing 
And you can also set it to like speed and if you want it to fully open or if you want to set the levels differently so it opens up at a different a different level there. But yeah, you have the smart lift gate and the power lift gate. Lights, ambient lighting, I want to touch on that. So you can set the brightness right there to how you like your ambient lighting. You can link it to your drive mode. You can also set color right there and then you can pick one of these pre-designed kind of custom colors or you can go into the color wheel and you can make the ambient lighting whatever you prefer. One of the benefits I'm gonna, I've am gonna i started doing is kind of doing these videos at night or kind of at dusk because you can kind of see the ambient lighting starting to kick on. Um, it wasn't like that when I first got into this driver's seat, but now you can see the ambient lighting uh, in, the, in the knob along the side. You'll see it kind of along the, the tail there, if I'm not mistaken. So you do have that ambient lighting um, in the vehicle, which is pretty cool. I'm a big fan of ambient lighting. And you can set all kinds of different settings. Seat, pretty easy. You can just, you know, set seat things. Let's go to cluster, because cluster is kind of what I like. I like to go to, let's show you cluster theme selection. And I'm going to go to sync with the time and weather. That's new dynamic theme oh okay it's not new they've just updated the description of it so dynamic theme and they moved it to the top which is kind of cool so sync with time and weather the theme automatically switches depending upon time and weather so take a look what it did over here so it's kind of sunset it's you know it's not exactly cloudy but there's a couple clouds in the sky pretty pretty nifty i'm gonna leave it there i liked i like that and i'm gonna leave that there for if, you know let, let my customers change that if they wish but uh, they must have did that with the last software update because that used to just say dynamic mode, but now they actually moved it up. And then you can switch the themes to different things also. Okay, scooting right along, eco vehicle, you can change different things here about how this operates. You know, your coasting guide, it'll tell you when to coast if, if need be. So kind of like when to take your foot off the brake to get regenerative braking. Um, I believe it uses the topography and the maps to kind of help with that. You can kind of uh, set your coasting of, of how you want it, like the, the um, pressure of it on your foot. Um, you can charge, charging connector locking mode. So I would say uh, the standard charging connector locks upon connection and unlocks when doors are unlocked. I'm gonna put that there because that's the safest way to do it. I drive an EV, I'm pretty good at this kind of stuff. And I say that thing should always be locked. Um, I've, I haven't personally experienced it, but I've, I've heard of horror stories where people just go around and plug in people's cars. Um, you can use the charging voice prompts. I like it kind of high. So that way, uh, when you connect the connector and the car starts charging, it'll say in a very loud voice, charging started. That's how you can easily know that's going on. Driver assistance. I'm not going to go through all of this, but you can change everything. I mean, if you like want your forward safety to be a warning only and not actively assist you can do that if you want to turn the whole thing off you can do that blind spot safety it's all right here so you can turn pretty much everything on and off or make it a beep or a not beep whatever you want to do so a lot of customization there like i said not going to go through everything there but just want to touch on some of that um where were we data network this guy does have a wi-fi router in it so you could get a wi-fi hotspot it does come with three free gigabytes of wi-fi or three months powered by verizon whichever comes first but you do have to click into data network and then make sure you have your key connect set up go to wi-fi hotspot enable hotspot and then do all that so not terribly hard obviously but you know you do get three months or three gigabytes whichever happens first display screen layout like i said you can be in these settings you know for all night long and set it how you like it insanely customizable vehicle uh, date time software update it is all right here questions and concerns um oh let's go down we geez what am i talking about we're not done yet so let me show you the feature that will not be in 2024 the feature of this vehicle that will not be in 2024 is right there the heated windshield 2024 models will not have the heated windshield take a look at that windshield i don't know if you can kind of see it but there's little black um, squiggles in there that um, are the heating elements on that windshield so um, 
It's an expensive windshield to replace, not gonna lie, but I've used that once or twice and it is a very cool feature. Um, the the um, snow just sloughs right off. I don't know why, but that's the only difference really in a 2024 model. It's a carryover year for 2024. This is one of my last 23s we're getting and um, that guy will not be there. I really love this display. I call it Star Tracky because this one display you can change by pressing that triangle and you can see now it is circulated air. All of that kind of remains the same. Map, navigation, star, which again is a customizable button. You can go there and switch it to whatever you like. Seek, track, radio, media, setup, all that jazz. But your power volume knob right there, your file tune knob over there changes when I click climate because now you have dual climate control. That part stays the same. Blower speed, which I like honestly on one. AC, you want to make sure that's turned on. If it's blowing hot air, double check that your AC is on. And then you can always click sync, which will sync the dual climate control to the driver. Driver only. Pretty important feature if you're going to be by yourself. It really just blows the air on the uh, the driver here um, and it kind of preserves the rest of the car there's no air blowing out of the other vents so it's using less energy which will give you more um, more of a range so I like to use driver only uh, honestly you kind of forget about that when there's other people in the car you gotta undo that now all the other vents are turned on but we're gonna stick with driver only now if you the one complaint about this vehicle is that this is hard to manage that while you're driving you're fiddling around with that stuff but if you press and hold one of these buttons either the triangle or the climate you now have an option that says you can choose infotainment climate or leave it to where you have to press it for it to display personally i'm an infotainment guy I like to use seek and track when I'm playing the music on my phone. So let's say I have to go to my climate. I'm going to press that, fiddle around with it, maybe change the blower speed, you know, go there, fiddle around, then I'm finished. 10 seconds later, not even 8 to 10 seconds later, it'll default back to the infotainment. So to me, that solved that problem. Um, but again, you just press and hold either that triangle or the little fan and then you can manipulate that. So I just set that back to off. Okay, wanted to point that out. Wireless phone charger, USB port, USB-C ports right down there. You'll see a little orange line right there uh, when the phone is charging. And then you have your little 12 volts right there. Heated seats, air conditioned seats, heated steering wheel, all right there. Start stop button right there. Uh, to go into park, you actually have to just hit the park button in the center of the knob. All hybrid vehicles have the reverse neutral drive shifting knob there. Then down here, you have your downward hill assist, auto hold. We already talked about the EV, HEV button to toggle through the features. Camera, if I press camera, you're gonna have that. Now, press this button to display the camera view or press and hold the active park assist. We'll talk about that in maybe a later video or at the end of this video as an add-on. But you do see you have guidance with the steering wheel. And then on this side, you can kind of see where those yellow lines are. That is your wheels. So you have guidance there. You have augmented reality view. If you press that, then you go into augmented reality view, which means you can manipulate this image. And it is a video image. You can kind of see the cars up there. Um, so yeah, augmented reality. And then you can go into settings, set your uh, settings for your rear view camera. Pretty nifty. Uh, you press that guy, you can go into a tow mode because this car technically can tow about 2,000 pounds. So it's there. Little house takes you home. Uh, forward parking sensors, drive mode, uh, that's a little knob. So if I turn that, you can see you can go from sport, smart, eco, and, and uh, snow. You're going to keep it in eco. And if I press that, you're going to see now it says lock up there so now you've locked your rear wheels so uh, that'll help with traction uh, that kind of thing a lot of information in this car i thought i was almost done earlier but i guess i'm not you got a center cubby right there really soft really good armrest right there you have your mirror but you this one does have the the home link down there so you have your three buttons so you can do three different um home links 
big, beautiful panoramic sunroof that goes all the way back. I never get that on the first try. Plenty of air there. You can bring it back with just a one touch. I didn't get that right either. I was just trying to bring back just the glass. It's all about how you touch this button. If you touch it kind of gently and at an angle, it should just bring back the partition. Yep, there it goes. And then if you go like straight up, like just like 90 degree angle straight up, you should be able to raise it for air. There you go. I never get that right on the first try after five and a half years. Super easy. You have these lights here that you can just press and they turn on. Um, I like the more elegant swipe and they will turn on. Uh, pretty nifty, but they, they just respond to either a gentle swipe or a physical touch. Uh, you have your Kia Connect and your roadside assistance buttons right there. And then you have your lighting controls for how you want your lights to turn on when the vehicle is on. You have your vanity mirrors. And you have your little light there. And those are dual vanity mirrors right there. Not horrible. Um, cup holders. You got your big area here for, for items, but if you want to turn these into cup holders, you can press that and they turn into cup holders right there. Um, you can really kind of see that orange popping up as the sun's going down. Man, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I don't know what. Um, again, if I can help you find a vehicle, let me know. Um, and then uh, this is the Kia 2023 Sportage Plug-In Hybrid uh, X-Line Prestige. Um, super cool vehicle i uh i can't talk more i can't talk enough about how good this vehicle is it's super cool very efficient very 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 friendly to use as in how easy it is how easy it is to charge um if you buy this one i know you're gonna love it best in class 10 year 100,000 mile warranty which includes the battery five year 60 bumper to bumper um five year 60 roadside assistance when it comes brand new and um Again, this is Vince with Bradley Kia, and I will see you guys down at the dealership. Thanks a lot.